to believe in hope and faith even when it seems that nothing is changing. We are to continue moment by moment believing. Look at Psalm 42 11. May it speak to you. And again, if you'd like to close your eyes and just receive these wonderful words from our Lord. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. Put your hope in God and praise Him and thank Him through your circumstance. Psalm 25, verse 4 and 5. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. I want you to take that verse and be sure to write it down or mark it in your Bible and read it this week because in our, 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 our times together here called day by day because living with these situations, our hardship, whatever it may be, we do learn to live day by day, one day at a time and this verse will really help you to be reminded of the hope you have in Him each day that again in Lamentations His mercy is new every morning for you every morning and uh, you're beginning to get that in you and believe it and it strengthens you it enables you to fight against uh, the weariness and and things that come on you you begin to deal uh, in a different way with them so it's very very important as uh, we're going through these times to keep our focus on Him. And as you're learning more and more through our times together, through our services together, you're getting more ammunition as well to stand and grow and be strengthened through what you're going through. So we must, we must focus on God. And uh, one of my favorite verses that really, really spoke to me as I first got started going through this process and seeking the Word and learning the verses and standing on them and letting it get in me. Uh, this was one of the first ones that really helped me and, and pushed me ahead was 2 Corinthians 4 verses 16 to 18. Oh dear hearts, I just know that this is for all of us right now wherever we are. Therefore we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So it's important that we don't focus on the temporary, which is this life on earth, what's happening at this time. We do. We seek the Lord to help us bring, it, bring, it, bring us through it. We ask His help to help us cope with it. But that is not our main focus in life. We are constantly, as we focus on God, we're seeking the eternal. Uh, what is your purpose through this, Lord? What are you trying to do in my life? Uh, how can I become the person you put me on the earth to be? We can't look at our present dilemma and not the eternal reward that that situation will actually put bring in us, will produce in us. The situation believing uh, and knowing because God's Word again we say is true, that uh, it's doing eternal work in us. It's, it's developing us to be more like Him. God wants, His heart's desire is to build His character in us. Uh, many of us have children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, and we all get tickled and we enjoy it when we see ourselves in our children, our grandchildren. Uh, imagine how the God who loves us more than we love them, those children, and He loves us so much more than we can possibly love anyone else. Imagine how much He wants to see Himself in us because He knows He has nothing but good things uh, to give us, and He yearns for that, for us. He wants that character built in us. He wants to bring us to a new level of obedience and humility. And that comes through these testing times in our lives and these trials in our lives. So the truth is, it's through the trials that God matures us and makes us more Christ-like. It doesn't happen otherwise. When we think again about disciplining children, 
teaching them what's right and wrong. They don't uh, learn it from just sitting them down and saying you do this and you don't do this or um, this is good or this is bad. A lot of their learning is, you know, even learning to walk. They fall, they get hurt and they get up and they do it again. You don't stop them because you know there's a lot of things they need to learn as young children, as teenagers, as young adults. They need to be let go to a degree through your wisdom so that they can learn and mature and be able to handle things that come their way. And that's very similar to what the Lord is doing with us. It's far more important. And the Lord gives us many things freely. Uh, his gifts he gives us freely and, and so you know our, our salvation but that's character is developed in us it is a process that we go through as we seek him as we mature and become more Christ-like because of our times of, of hardship our times of suffering so I encourage you to watch this again and to uh, we will pray together I encourage you to endure to persevere, to seek Him, to rest in Him, and to know that uh, He is doing a work in you. You may not see it, you may not yet feel it, but He is. And uh, you'll look back and you will see it just as I do with myself. And I thank Him every day for it. Would you bow with me in prayer, please? Lord, we thank You for Your Word Lord, all of us would rather not have to go through hard times and pain. Well, we would just like to sail through our lives with nothing but happiness. Uh, but Lord, uh, that's not what life is, and none of us go through without hardship of some kind. Help us, Lord, to go through in a way that's pleasing to you. Help us, Lord, uh, with all that we're facing, with all that we're having to deal with. We just right now together... We come together, Lord, and we lay it at your feet. We say, Lord, we can't cope with this. Uh, we, we just don't have the strength or the ability. But we thank you that in you our weakness is made strong, that by your Spirit you strengthen us and guide us and uh, give us your peace and hope. We thank you, Lord, that even as we begin to learn your word, that you're working in us, you're loving us as we seek you. And Father, I pray right now for each person. I pray, Lord, for your presence. I pray for your fullness to come on them and your blessing now, wherever they are, sitting up or lying down. Lord, you're with them. You know them by name. You know every hair on the head and you love them so much. I pray your love be poured out on them, Lord. And I pray for joy to begin to rise up in them, the joy despite their circumstances, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for the chance to be together like this. Uh, Lord, we pray that these words today be comforting and strengthening to each and every person. We pray, Ross and I pray, for changed lives in our congregation, in these precious people that are joining us. Uh, Lord, may our hearts be filled with love for one another. Uh, may we continue, Lord, to grow in you for your kingdom glory. And we thank you, Lord, that in you there is hope. And help us, Lord, look beyond this temporary and ahead to you. And we thank you in the name of Jesus we pray. And all of us say together, Amen and Amen. Thank you so much. Please join us again next week. And remember that you're in our prayers. God's blessing on you and your family as you go ahead in this journey with our Lord Jesus Christ. Bye.